What's going on everybody? So this is a supplementary video for the A111 track that we just released on the YouTube page. You can download it for free on the Bandcamp. Here's a link. And if you go into our playlist, there is a series showing how it was made from start to finish. So highly recommend you check this out before diving into the rest of this. But for those that have seen the video, you probably noticed this crazy shape and a lot of 111s, right? So what does that all mean? what's the title name what is what is this right um well we decided to name the track a sanskrit word badraganita which means the making of magical squares and uh that term was coined by a mathematician in the 13th century india named narayana pandit and he came up with a lot of uh formulas cool stuff that we still use to this day and devoted an entire chapter in his book of formulas to magic squares even gave it its own word so um thought that was pretty cool for those of you that don't know what magic squares mean uh, or what they are highly recommend you check this out um lots of people do cool stuff with them you can you know i think they even still have like advanced math classes on how to make them and and really cool stuff but pretty much what it is is if you add up any row column or diagonal on uh, these squares, they all have the same sum. So the three by three square sums up to 15, four by four square sums up to 34, um, so on and so forth. And in this video, we happen to use the six by six square for certain reasons. So let's kind of dive into that. Um, the alchemists back in the day, you know, those crazy people that used to try to make gold from scratch or mix the two elements and make gold. Um, would use these squares for different things, making sigils and and doing magic. Oh wow! Uh, which, if you notice, it's spelled with a K. But uh, each square was correlated to a certain planetary body, to a certain element, um, and also to a certain branch in the tree of life. And the six by six square, which is the one we use, really stuck out to us because it's the one that correlates to the sun correlates to gold and it's also the center of the tree of life shape so uh if you're not familiar with the shape this is called the sephiroth or tree of life it's used in kabbalah for um different things um some people say that it's even used in tarot cards that uh, tarot cards have like a secret code that includes the tree of life in them that kind of stuff alistair crowley you know interesting stuff but the center of it is the Tiferot, the sun, number six. And that is the six by six magic square. So all this stuff really kind of stuck out to us. And uh, we use that in the creation of the song. Um, so, you know, what does it mean musically? Why, why do we choose to do this? If any of you are really into like making music, um, you notice or you know that all the notes are halves and doubles. So, you know, A440, like if you if you study music at school, you know, they're going to make you tune to 440, you know, and um, who knows why. Maybe it's an arbitrary choice, but a lot of people are, are online saying that, you know, you should tune to 432, you should tune to, to different things, 448, who knows, right? But I, I'm not trying to advocate what tuning to use. I just thought that this was pretty interesting that if you um, alter the tuning from 440 to 444, you half that and you get 222, you half that and you get 111. And... Um, being that 111 is the number that we're using here from the magic square i thought that was pretty cool um it's also uh yeah so you know if you if you alter the tuning from 440 to 444 that's what you get right here and you might have seen this chart in the tutorial series that i did um but yeah you also get really weird correlations you don't quite get 333 but it's close enough um you don't quite get 555 although you do get 55.5 um the dreaded number of the devil the 666 pretty close 777 doesn't quite land up there um you know and there's a book by alistair crowley named 777 so that's kind of weird because that's the only one that really doesn't quite fit everything else is pretty close 777 isn't but um it all makes sense when you start looking at like the harmonic series of music like if you get 55 and you double it 110 you double that 220 you know you you double that 330 I mean 440 and then so pretty much once you start looking at how harmonics work it makes sense you know the the song will still be harmonic 
you just keep doubling or adding the same frequency. So, you know, 165 minus 55 is 110, 220 minus 55, so on and so forth. But pretty much what happens is when you, um, when you vibrate a string, you literally get halves, doubles, thirds, quarters, fifths, sixths, so on and so forth. And that's what creates a harmonic of a certain frequency. So literally puts the song in harmony. So what we did for the track is we used 111, 222, 333, 444, 555, 666, 777, 888, 999, and 1111, just because there's a lot of cool, interesting things that occur with that number as well, too. Maybe you see it on clocks every day as well. Um, so another interesting thing to point out that uh, if you use these numbers, um, Tesla said that, you know, Nikola Tesla has this weird quote online that if you... If you knew the the magnificence of the 369, you'd have the key to the universe. And one thing that happens when you start using these numbers is if you um, if you add the numbers up, I believe it's called Pythagorean number reduction, which they use in Gematria, all time back into uh, Kabbalah. Um, you get 369. So 111, 111, 3, 2, 2, 2 equals 6, 3, 3, 3 equals 9, so on and so forth. And... Um, so that was another interesting thing that really pointed uh, pointed us in the direction of using this musical tuning uh, for the song, and it's it's really interesting because the whole thing kind of ties back into like the Kabbalah, uh, the Tree of Life, Flower of Life, Metatron's Cube, that kind of stuff. Um, and some people even go as far as making like sigils. I don't know if, you know, that's another thing that people do with magic squares is they um, they will kind of like make letters or they'll make words and they'll break the words down into numbers and then they'll draw shapes with those numbers and then like make a wish and kind of uh, use that to enhance their will, if you will, which is to me kind of strange. I don't do it. I just think it's it's cool. I mean, people really get into this stuff. So um, another thing just to kind of like really tie all the loose ends together. Uh, one last thing that really kind of uh, threw me into using this number and particularly was uh, the solfeggio frequencies. So for those of you guys who haven't heard of the solfeggio frequencies um, online, there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff talking about how if you use 174 hertz 285 396 that you can you know heal certain things you can reduce pain you can turn grief into joy transform your dna so on and so forth which eh, it's to this day it's kind of been um i wouldn't want to say debunked but there's not a lot of evidence showing that this works but i thought it was interesting you know so um i started looking into it and one thing i noticed you know, aside from these numbers, if you start actually looking at the interval between the numbers, you also get 111. So 963 minus 852 is 111. 852 minus 741 is 111. So on and so forth. There's uh, a few ones that don't, like 417 minus 396 does not equal 111. But for the most part, the number popped up enough times that I got curious, you know. And um, I started wondering, well, where does this come from, you know? why did why did people using this you know like and they say that it's like ancient stuff but really to me that doesn't make a lot of sense because uh i mean we didn't know what hertz were until like the 1800s with when with that dude heinrich heinrich i believe is his name heinrich hertz and he came up with the concept of how to actually calculate a uh, frequency using you know time and i mean the ancients didn't even know how to calculate time to the exact second i mean maybe they did i don't know but um, not definitely not as accurately as we do today with, you know, our instruments and using cesium, you know, this and that to actually really break down what time is. But um, I looked into it and I found that the Sofedro numbers, they actually got derived from a verse in the Bible um, in Numbers chapter 7, verse 12 through 83. And if you if you notice here, um, pretty much what it is, is it's like uh, it's repeating verses so he starts off and it's like a certain order to the way that the the verses are structured and it's always similar so it starts off on the first day you know on the second day on the third day and that's where you get 369 and he's you know he has an offering an offering an offering that's your 417 you know he gives a spoon a spoon another spoon and then you get 528 so uh 
somebody went through and once again using the number reduction did 1 plus 2 is 3, 1 plus 8 is 9, 2 plus 4 is 6, 1 plus 3 is 4, um, 1 plus 9 is 10, 1 plus 0 is 1, so on and so forth. And so they they got the um, Sofejo numbers from this verse right here. And you can kind of go more into it if you like. Here's the link. Um, but one thing I noticed that really kind of stuck out is that uh, inside of this verse, there's also 111, which is 111, which is what we've been kind of trying to figure out right here. And he also mentions gold a lot of times. Gold, golden spoon, um, and every other verse. So what does it all mean? Why is it uh, correlating so much? You know, is there something to this? I don't know. But I did go and do a little bit of research regarding um, how sound relates to color. And if you've ever looked into, like, the electromagnetic spectrum, um, which, as a matter of fact, I think I have a link right here. So the electromagnetic spectrum is basically um, everything is frequency. So, I mean, sound is the lower hertz range. Uh, you start to get into radio frequencies in the megahertz, microwaves, um, infrared frequency, and you get to light frequency. So essentially using the um, halving and doubling scheme that's shown in music because everything is just a half or a double, you know, a is 440, you half that is 220, you half that is 110, so on and so forth. If you keep doubling uh, 111 until you get into the light spectrum, um, you will get the color of the sun, which is pretty interesting. So um, that's another interesting thing that kind of led me into using the song. You get like this orangish color and... This this is a really cool site if you haven't checked it out before. Um, this is a sound to color calculator, and he does basically what I'm saying. If you just get the sound hertz and you double it until you get into the um, terahertz level, which is where um, which is where light is right here, you get to the terahertz level, you will get the color of sound. And um, he broke it down here for us. So a forty a four forty four equals 488.18 terahertz and that color has a wavelength of 614 so if you um if you get an led for example and you look at a 600 i think it's 614.1 nanometers if you look at an led light that is i don't think you can buy it in that spectrum but if you get a 615 nanometer led light um it's pretty much gold like I mean, it's a yellowish orange. Um, it gives off a gold hue like the sun. So all this stuff, going back to magic squares, going back to the 6x6 gold sun magic square, um, it's all correlated in just like this weird way. And I just thought it was too fun to not play with, you know? <laughs> And really, that's what the song comes from. Um, like, there's the whole thing about people trying to get others to turn tune to 432, tune to this and that. And I'm not telling anybody to tune to anything. You can tune to whatever you want. Um, I think numbers are arbitrary. It's more about the intervals. That really is what interests me. And the 111 interval, you know, one tunes to A40, A444, is what really just caught my eye and really just like was interesting to me. So pretty much that's the, that's the sum of it all. Hopefully uh, that sheds a little bit more light, <laughs> sheds a little bit more golden sunlight onto this track and what we were doing when we made it. And um, maybe it'll give you a little bit more appreciation for it. Um, we even went as far as to uh, make it four minutes and 44 seconds. <laughs> And I think it's funny that we even have 11 likes and one dislike right now. So there you go, 11, 1, 111, 1, 1, 1. And um, enjoy the video. We included a lot of these cool little shapes. In the middle as well, if you go to the middle of it, we found, at least we're trying to find the most symmetrical um, 
symmetrical diagram that you could make within this magic square. And we also found one last little tidbit here is that um, when you draw the sequence of the numbers with a line on every magic square, you get a symmetrical inverse of it. So every magic square, except for the six by six, is inversely symmetrical, meaning that it makes the same shape if you flip it upside down and start from last to first, and then right side up from first to last, it'll make the same shape. And every magic square does this. Even the nine by nine, even the eight by eight, the seven by seven, they all do this, except for the six by six magic square. It's the only one that's not symmetrical for some reason. It's not, um, well, at least I couldn't find it. We use this uh, magic square generator to come up with um, different magic squares. And I, be, I even went as far as making this little diagram here of all the magic squares and couldn't find one that was exactly symmetrical. Found some cool ones and we use those in the video. But the one that is closely, I mean, it's as close to being symmetrical as possible where it gets thrown off is in this little square right here. This square is not symmetrical to this one. Um that was another interesting thing that was just like, why is this the only square that's not symmetrical? Which, by the way, if you know one that is, let me know. If you have a 6x6 six six symmetrical magic square, let me know, let me know in the links and we'll, we'll get into it, man. So, um, But yeah, that's, that's about it. I just wanted to kind of like throw that in there to show people what we were doing when we made this song and maybe create a little bit more appreciation for what it is aside from just being a, you know, mixture of sounds there's there's a lot of cool little concepts that we threw in there for um for people to kind of learn and and go check out so uh r.i.p terrence mckenna look him up if you don't know who that is and uh thanks for watching peace